Hello, welcome in. It's the PHNX Cardinals podcast, your premier Arizona Cardinal podcast. Like and subscribe. Give us a five star wherever you get your programming. Become a diehard. Go PHNX.com. Pick up a free hat and or shirt every single year. You are a diehard. I'm diehard for this man to my right. It's Bull Brock live at the PHNX headquarters in downtown Phoenix. Damon Dog behind the mic. We are roughly three weeks away from the first round of the 2024 NFL Draft and did another layer, Bo, get exposed as it relates to what a team or teams may do come that first round. It just shows the inexact science that is the NFL Draft, right? You try, you think you have everything nailed down. You've got quarterbacks going one, two, three, and like a trade down could be possible, trade back up, and then you've got, you know, you're sitting there with your second first round pick at 27. You're like, okay, if they trade down the Cardinals, they could probably get... A wide receiver, if they don't get it with their first pick later in the first round, and then you see this aggressive team in the Buffalo Bills pull off a deal today, and they're sitting there with a wide receiver core that resembles the Arizona Cardinals, no stars, and Brandon Bean's done it before. He's gone up draft boards several times, and I don't think that the he's, he's going to shy away from it, especially with a loaded receiver class potentially do it again this year so it's uh it does add another wrinkle uh many like i've got on this 4k camera that you're seeing on my face right now uh but what's up everybody darren deuce dd Illini mcg honcha first how about our guy was it diehard gary jumping in what's hey. up diehard gary uh love to see everybody in the chat hit that like button right out of the gates let's get this thing quickly over 100 and continue to go up the rest of the show uh, Alina and McGee say nobody wants to trade to 28 with the Bills. Maybe a team that wants more assets. We're going to talk about Benjamin Albright on his uh, podcast radio show last night dropped what he believes is going to happen or close to it within the first 12 picks of the draft. It is flipping wild. We have a <laughs> breakdown of that coming soon and uh, on this program, by the way. And so knowing what we know, it's like, okay, the Buffalo Bills have basically announced to everybody, we hate Gabe Davis. We hate Stephon Diggs. Get out of town. We're not right. a fan of you. We can't beat the Chiefs with you. So now we're going to pivot, and we're going to take a rookie or multiple. I would expect the Bills, like the Cardinals, to look at multiple receivers in this draft class, but it's almost a precursor. They're going to use their first pick on a receiver, and to your point, Bo, like they're loaded with ammo now. They have multiple second rounders. They've got a third rounder. It's like, okay, they're going to probably come up for somebody. Well, what does that tell you then? If the Arizona Cardinals dick around to pick four and they <laughs> want to trade down, you got to be prepared for one of two things. If you trade down to 11, you better be ready to overdraft like a Brian Thomas Jr. 11, yeah. or you better trade up at 23 and go get somebody. But at the end of the day, like if you don't think the other teams and the Bills have shown you their cards, the, the Bills have told you today with this move, Stephon Diggs, you know, two years ago had 1,400 yards. Last year, he had damn near 1,200 yards. Very productive, scored a bunch of touchdowns. They set him off for a second round pick at right. 30 years old. The Cardinals 25 second pick. round pick. Right. The yeah. Cardinals <clears throat> couldn't get up, couldn't get a pick for, for DeAndre Hopkins with similar guarantees. Right. The Buffalo Bills are telling you, we think this wide receiving core in this draft, this draft class is elite, is yeah. 100 percent generational. And we're gonna go get ours. So if I'm Monty Osfor, I'm sitting back and I think I can be cute with trade down and trading up and manipulate the board and getting everybody I want. Hang on a second. I Number one, I don't think there's any scenario, any scenario in which the three top three receivers don't go in the top 10. Right. And then number two is, okay, you want to slum it up with those teams at the back half of the first <laughs> round and it's flipping Royal Rumble with everybody. Good luck. I don't like, I don't want to sit there in the twenties <laughs> you know, with my discount code and trying to get a number one receiver. <laughs> I don't want to do that. And Buffalo Bills are like their major players. The Chiefs, right. with everything happening with Rasheed Rice and company, they are players. Like, right. you, want, you want to enter that? I don't. You have earned a top 10 pick 
Use it on a wideout, please, right. Monty Austin. Ford. It's it's not uh, it's not Empire today. It's not BetMGM. That discount code is not going to just give you like everything you want in this world and more. Right. It's it's going to give you access to uh, Adane Mitchell. Lad, uh, lad's lad. You want to become one of Lad's lads? You want to be Lad McConkey? Lad Johnny doesn't want to be that. We certainly have established that. Or do you like you talk about some? I mean. Troy Franklin out of Oregon, who at one point, you know, early in the draft season was a first rounder, but now has kind of fallen from grace a little bit. Roman Wilson, who was firmly a day two guy. I mean, that's where you're starting. That's where you start to like reach a little bit, right? Keon Coleman. Yeah. Keon Coleman back in the conversation, but that's what, what's going on. I mean, that's because after the wide receiver market crashed, right? A glass, a, a couple off seasons ago, we saw wide receiver madness where we saw players like Devontae Adams traded and then sign extensions. Tariq Hill traded, signs mega million extensions, and guys are making upwards of $30 million a year. The NFL noticed that, hey, there's guys coming into the league, first round, second round, third round, fourth round, fifth round, that are making immediate impacts and are on these rookie deals they don't have to go break the bank in paying these guys. Sure, it's nice to draft and develop and extend the guy, but if they're gonna if they're gonna push push the limits as far as what they're gonna make, like we've been talking about this a lot as far as the impact of a wide receiver. And Brandon Bean realized that. Like, sure, Stefan Diggs has been fine. He's been huge in the development as far as Josh Allen, but they they're paying him thirty million dollars to go away. Thirty million dollars to go away. They, and as you said, they, Gabe Davis, they're like. Okay, cool. Go go test the market. They didn't even try him. to sign him. They were like, yeah. They were just like, he was like, we know what Gabe Davis is. We know what Gabe Davis is. We know what our team looks like with Gabe Davis and Stefan Diggs, and, and it's not good enough. So we're going to try our hand. We don't have any cap space, so we're just going to go to the draft, turn the draft, and all the money we're paying Josh Allen, he's got to earn it and, and elevate the wide receiver core that we're going to give him that's right now Curtis Samuel and uh, a couple ham sandwiches. Yeah, Dirt McGurk. K1 since day one. I'm going to disagree with this. Bills can't get high enough to threaten the Cardinals pick. Not at four or 11, right. but it, ask yourself, K1 since day one, if if they can't get back. So let's say they trade down to 11 and they have 11 and 23. Okay. They're not taking a receiver at 11. And they can't, if they can't get back in the top 10, their first pick's not going to be a wideout. It's going to be a tackle. It's going to be a defensive lineman. It's going to be a corner. It's going to be an edge rusher. It's not going to be a receiver. So, okay, let's fast forward to the slums of the 20s now. And we saw how that worked out a couple of years ago, as my co-host articulated yesterday, when everybody and their mom thought, okay, we're going to get, you know, Dotson or Traylon Burks or something. They all went in like the top right. 16, 17 picks. So Steve Keim, in all his wisdom, had to trade his first rounder for Hollywood <laughs> Brown. So, yeah, it's great that you have 23 and 27 and 35. What's going to be left for you there? Like, as a true number one receiver – in this class, you're looking at wide receiver like six or seven at that point. Right. I think unequivocally, four wide receivers go in the top 15. Brian Thomas Jr. is going to be a top 15 pick. Then if you don't think for a second somebody's getting overdrafted because of this class, like right now, I'm trying to buy the house. The real estate market's nuts, right? People are going crazy. There's not enough houses to support the market. There aren't enough wide receivers in the first round that, or excuse me, there are too many teams in the first round that people need receivers. As my co-host just said, Troy Franklin, probably not a first-round pick going in the first round, right? right. Lad McConkey should not go in the first round. Guess what? I bet he does. So if you're sitting there at 23 and 27 and you want to screw around and say, you know, we're going to take a corner from Toledo at 11 or we're going to take a defensive tackle, which I support, you better get aggressive on the phones. And it just it leads Cardinal fans to be in a place of uncertainty because you're passing on a generational prospect that wants to be here in Marvin Harrison Jr. that we're going to talk about. He's going to do his visit. He's going to be in Tempe in like a day and a half. You're passing on that just to water down the approach. And I'm sorry, it's not a good move. Buffalo is, is going to lean into the strength of this draft. They're going to take a receiver. Cardinals, I'm begging you. This is a historically great offensive class. Receiver, tackle, QB. Your first pick should not be a defensive player. And I, I like Byron Murphy. And I right. like Quinlan Mitchell. That is a mistake. I don't care how I don't care if you have half of the first round picks. You have 15 through 32. That is a mistake to do. Take the receiver high. Take Joe Alt high if you absolutely love him. Right. He deferred to a position where this year nobody deems it a strength as a premier corner class or defensive tackle class or edge class. Right. These other teams are showing you, 
hey, we think these receivers are awesome. We're getting rid of our old receivers. The Jaguars said, you know what, Calvin Ridley. <laughs> Patriots said, Calvin Ridley, we're, we're going to pass on this. The Titans are idiots. So that's why they did what they did. It's just, it's, it's nuts right now. And I think Austin Ford's smart enough to read that. Yeah, I mean, people are, are calling what Jacksonville's doing right now malpractice as far as organization they've got they've still got trevor lawrence on his rookie deal right and how they've navigated those waters um but like if they come away with one of these receivers like it can it changes the complexion you add one of those receivers with christian kirk and and what they're doing in the, with their tight end ingram and yeah. like everybody's like oh sh shit look out for jacksonville they mm -hmm. like sweet sweet music with trent Mal i mean it's unlikely with trent bulky because he is a he is a dud as, as far as a general manager but uh, it, the, it's there like the class it lends the you the opportunity to to look like a smart general manager and like sometimes you can get too cute like when we're talking about this like it's not necessarily the wrong move like you can wrap your head around taking all of those picks three first round picks two including in this in this talent rich draft but at the same time you are punting on the opportunity to get the cream of the crop as far as this this unbelievable wide receiver class in Marvin Harrison Jr. or the other two guys. like And that's the key here. It's not just MHJ. It's Malik Neighbors. It's Roma Dunze. Even though our guy Benjamin Albright is getting a little wacky, I don't know if he's hitting the bottle before he's doing his mock drafts, but, man, he went crazy as far as his mock went yesterday. We're going to get to his mock because it is absolutely lunacy here. I want to get to these Super Chats before I do. Everybody like this video. The goal today, 400 likes here My on a God. Football Wednesday Deuce five dollars. A lot of hashtags in this super chat from our guy Deuce, friend of the program. Hashtag no MHJ. Hashtag yes alt. Keep rocking, you guys. Go PHNX. Tune Squad in the house. Uh, he and and Didi, the VP of the Fifteen Tune Squad. Deuce, uh, you know, uh, about a month ago, I thought you were nuts. I thought Joel had exited the conversation. Now I'm, I'm sitting back here and I'm like, he is unequivocally the top tackle. We know the Cardinals want offensive linemen, like. I think I think there's a good chance they take a receiver, but if that ne that next group, if they can't get one of the big receivers, it, Joe Alt has to be in the conversation. He's just too good a player at a position we know they value. They traded yeah. up for a tackle last year, and then of course our guy Brian Balder is on the show on Monday, Bo, and he's just like, you can bide yourself time with Joe Alt to guard and Jonah Williams to tackle, and then you know what? You just make a decision what's best for your team in 2025. Yeah, you create a good problem having too many right. talented tackles, right? And, you know, he, Joe Alt, what he brings to the table, 6'8", he's going to be 21 before the start of the season. He's going to be a, a young 21. And, yeah. you know, I, I trust my guy, Tyler, who covers the Titans, and he's like, hey, Rand Carthon, if Joe Alt falls in your lap, let's not overthink this, right? He, yeah. He was saying, he, he, looked, he watched the tape, and Joe Alt is an absolute specimen and, and somebody that's going to be a stud in this league. If you get the opportunity of drafting this guy who's like, I know you have premium positions, especially on the offensive line accounted for right now, but for the next two seasons, you, you take the opportunity because it's like, okay, you got Joel who plays a premium position. Then you got Dallas Turner playing a premium position. Who's the better prospect? Who's the better player? Who's going to be the guy that yeah. at the end of, the, of his career, you're going to say that guy was a better player than, than, you know, is it alt versus Turner? I, I would lean alt. Well, and you're you're also the Cardinals and the Titans. I don't the Titans have Will Levis, so it, I'm just assuming they love Will Levis, even though we don't. Yeah, he eats, he eats bananas with the peel on, and he eats yeah. mayonnaise straight up. Like he's a weird mayonnaise guy. in his coffee. Yeah, that's nuts. Uh, and I, I do he like should mayonnaise. Be, he but, should, like he should have to sleep in a place with padded walls. Like that's that's insanity. But the but the point remains: like if you have your franchise quarterback and you're in the top ten, or you think you have your guy you're going to benefit from this talent. And so what your initial mindset should not be is let's move down. Now the chargers with Harbaugh are in a different story. We're going to talk about that, but like they didn't just trade down last year. The Cardinals passed on Will Anderson jr. Last year, they right. passed on the defensive lineman that went to Philadelphia that we talked about at nauseum because of his legal problems, right? They, they passed on Devon Witherspoon. They passed on premium talent. Now they came up for Paris. You just, I don't think you can do that again. I think this team is close enough this year, especially with Marvin Harrison Jr. This team is going to be in the mix for the postseason. Kev Brooks, 499. Hey, guys, do you think we can trade 11 plus 23 to get back up to five to get Marv, but keep the 2025 first and more crazy draft season, boys? I think the Chargers would do that tomorrow, Kevin. I think that that's a lot to 
a lot of hurdles to jump. If you're if you're asking yourself, is that fair in terms of the draft chart? Eleven and the Cardinals' first pick in the third round. A lot of people would say that's fair to go up to like seven or eight with the Titans or the Falcons. So there are going there would be a lot of teams, Kev, that would say, yeah, eleven and twenty three. Let's do that. So. I mean, we're going to talk about what Benjamin Albright said, but not to spoil too much. He's kind of thinking in your same wheelhouse, but you got to get the three first initially from the Minnesota right. Vikings. Well, yeah, it look, I mean, Los Angeles is, is in the same predicament. Like they'd be punting on the ability to get a neighbors, an MHJ, uh, Roman Dunze, but like <clears throat> we know the brand of football and the Cardinals are similar. The brand of football that they want to play, like, Jim Harbaugh would be doing that with the caveat, like, okay, I can get my guy, you know, Fuaga at 11 potentially and really start to set up Justin Herbert for success by keeping him upright going forward and be able to kind of road grade a little bit in the, in the run game. Yeah. Can I, can I make a quick point too? And we talked about this yesterday. Like somebody asked, does Kyler want a receiver like Marvin? We've talked about it. he wants offensive linemen. I think Kyler and Herbert's careers are very similar. They had coaches that were over their skis, but then their offense was flush with some on the surface, really good receivers, Christian mm -hmm. Kirk, Deandre Hopkins, Mike Williams, and of course, Keenan Allen, but they didn't win anything. And they got their brains kicked in. Herbert couldn't finish the season last year. He was injured. Kyler Murray got hurt. I think these franchises now with, I you know totally respect John and Gannon. And I think Jim Harbaugh is the ultimate winner. Like they understand, it's like let's just protect these guys and let's let our franchise quarterbacks making big money elevate some other receivers. Now, I, I, the Cardinals though took their medicine; they should take MHJ. I, I think Jim Harbaugh has no problem saying, "Let's go tackle, let's trade down, and let's get a receiver later." Like we'll, we'll mm -hmm. figure this out. Yeah, I mean, it's a, it's an easy yes. Like, hey, Kyler, would you like to? Would you like a six foot four playmaker in Marvin Harrison Jr. who can? Uh, out jump everybody high point the ball better than anybody else in this league get open yeah. you know I, I think that that's a simple yes uh but he understands the value and he's never going to discount it anymore in his career because he's played behind just patchwork offensive line after patchwork of offensive line now we talk about the chargers and we go to our guy who's got a cal ripkin jr slash joe thomas iron man streak going on our guy Charlie jumping back in the chat. Thank you so much for the 499 super chat. Everybody commend Charlie for uh, he, he's a devote, devout. I hope Charlie sticks around after Chargers. The I hope so too. Uh, I love Charlie. Charlie neighbors posted on uh, live, then deleted it. House shopping in LA said he was their guy yesterday. So in New York Giants might be your Huckleberry. So uh, man, sweet, sweet at the end of the day, Charlie. it's just is talent just going to win out. Are these teams that are trade hungry just going to say at the end of the day? Malik like, Neighbor, well, let me tell you. I mean, Charlie, you you should know this. I mean, it's a short flight from LA to Phoenix. You you can you can make your off season home in LA, and it's a short less than an hour, like an hour flight to Los Angeles from Phoenix. So it doesn't. How dare you rule everything out? It doesn't rule anything out. How do the Cardinals it. end up with Malik Neighbors? Uh, walk, me, walk me through how that happens. It would have to be the giant like they'd have to fall yeah. back to six but but then again like yeah was what does harbaugh do then what are the what do, does harbaugh take marvin i i just if there's one player i feel like the cardinals aren't going to take and you guys can clip this and old takes expose me here after three weeks from now like i don't think malik neighbors is going to be a cardinal like i, I just either. i don't even know how that would work i mean like, he was here yesterday Right. He was, he was at the facility before he was house shopping in Los Angeles. I feel like that's doing this. You're checking a box. And like, I think they would love to have him on the team, but it's like, it's clear. It's going to be Marvin or you trade down and then maybe a mini trade up to get Rome or a full trade up to get Marvin. Yeah. Uh, I don't. Yeah. Malik I mean, just, I think there's, there's, there's so much to it. And it, it's the brilliance of Monty Austin for it. Like, I'm not saying it's like diabolical, but he's getting to know the prospects as much as he possibly can. He's marrying it with the tape. Uh, he's setting himself up to pivot in any direction, right? Is because he understands the inexact science as far as the draft board goes and how things can go awry at any moment, right? Uh, we think what we know, but it, it, at the same time, like somebody could just detonate as far as the draft board goes before the Cardinals even pick, right? Or if they trade yeah. up or they trade down and they want to trade back up. But 
you know, like he he wants to be able to have conversations with GMs and be educated on the on the wide receiver, like the the prospects, and in this case, Malik Neighbors, like his wants, his needs, and all that. I'm sure he could use that as well. Yeah, it's le- you definitely you vet him. He's a top thirty pick. We're gonna get to we have a breakdown of all the Cardinals' top thirty visits so far. This is from Tom Dollar ninety nine, MHJ at four trade up for alt. We have the ammo. They do. It would take all of the ammo. I mean, it would take. You would have to give up 27, 35, and another pick to go up. But again, we know they love both those prospects. So, like on the surface, you're not helping your defense, but you're you're right. drafting two players that like have where do you, I, where do you put the Cardinals defense right now as it stands? It's not still not good enough. It's it's yeah, it's bottom third in the NFL. Yeah. So, I think it's it overachieved because again and Every year I understand that year. all in MHJ, it's it, it gives you rocket fuel as far as your offense, it, it, an offense that with Kyler Murray in the lineup was top ten during the, his eight game stretch. But and it, it, like you can only go so high, and it's like okay, you're just going to get in shootout after shootout, and that's not a good way. It's not a consistent way to win. It's Do you remember the Gi- the Giants game where Danny Dimes picked this defense apart? Yeah, I, I think this defense is going to be better. But the Cardinals couldn't have scored enough points that game to stop right. Daniel Jones. Yeah, when Danny Jones is going back in every single drive, he's finding pay dirt in the end zone, not just field goals. He scored four consecutive drives touchdowns against this defense. And, like, I know you you raised the floor a little bit on the defensive line, but still you don't have that disruptive, you know, three-technique defensive lineman that's going to go in there and and beat around some interior defensive line or offensive linemen. So they have a long way to go. And if, if you're going to give up the draft capital necessary to get up and get a guy like Alt, couple him with Marvin Harrison Jr., I think you're, you're just punting on the ability to really kind of rebuild this defense. And I think in year two under Gannon and Rollis, they, they want to be able to compete with some some guys that are up to par as far as just being able to play out there you know, each and every week at, at the NFL level. We're going to hop back to our Super Chats here in a second, but I want to get to this Benjamin Albright Top 12 Mock Draft just three weeks out. Before we do, though, I want to tell you guys about our friends at BetMGM. First bet offer up to $1,500. Of course, men's and women's college basketball Final Four. No better time than to become a new customer with our friends at BetMGM or an existing customer. But if this is your first time dabbling with our friends at BetMGM, use that bonus code PHNX. They're going to hook you up. A bonus bets match up to $1,500 first bet offer. And, uh, folks, if you haven't tried it yet, so easy to get started. And on top of everything else, they've got draft props right now. If you feel like, hey, J.J. McCarthy could slide, Brock Bowers could go here, download the BetMGM Sportsbook app on your iOS or Android device or check them out at BetMGM.com. Sign up and deposit. It's got to be 10 bucks into your BetMGM Sportsbook account, place your first wager, and you're going to receive up to $1,500 back in bonus bets if that bet loses. So you bet 10, you get 10 if it loses. You bet 100, you get 100 if it loses. Now, if it wins, you get the payout, you get the winning, and you're winning big with BetMGM, but you got to use the bonus code PHNX. You got to dabble with our friends at BetMGM. We love our friends at BetMGM, especially at the Great Lawn at State Farm Stadium, where we spent most of the season and uh, it's a premier sportsbook app that you got to check out for yourself. You also got to check out the show notes for full details. Now listen to my guy, Shane Diefenbach, talk about it in the disclaimer. Bonus bets expire in seven days. One new customer offer only. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. Available in the U.S. Call 877-8-HOPE-NY-467-369. New York. Call 1-800-327-5050. Massachusetts. 21 plus only. Please gamble responsibly. Call 1-800-NEXT-STEP. Arizona. 1-800-BETS-OFF. Iowa. 1-800-981-0023. Puerto Rico. First bet offer for new customers only. Subject to eligibility requirements. Bonus bets are non-withdrawable. In partnership with Kansas Crossing Casino and Hotel. See BetMGM.com for terms. U.S. promotional offers not available in New York, Nevada, North Carolina, Ontario, or Puerto Rico. Let's talk about more ways to win, more fun ways to win. How about Arizona Lottery's greatest, latest promotion? It's your Arizona Lottery Adventure tickets where you've got three tickets right now where you can win traditionally where you just get you out your your lucky coin and you scratch off, right? And it's got three iconic landscapes from our great state of Arizona, Picacho Peach, Monument, Monument Valley, and Camelback Mountain. Those tickets, you can win prizes up to 50 k not bad. Come away with extra $50,000 and have a fun time doing it. Or you can check in geolocated areas around the state of Arizona right now from Flagstaff to Yuma. And you check in, you go to those destinations, you go and visit azadventure.com for details and directions. And you check in at those destination coordinates on the website. These you can um, actually get in and try to win a million dollars cash or Arizona travel prizes 
Check it out. AZAdventure.com. Arizona Lottery, not just about playing games, winning prizes. It's about giving back to its state and its communities. We love Arizona Lottery. Visit AZAdventure.com for more information on how you can take an adventure for a chance to win one million bucks in cash or Arizona travel prizes. Benjamin Albright, like he always does, puts out his top 12 mock draft, what he believes is going to go down. And before I get to this, it's an audio-only edition. I suggest everybody go check it out on Ben's feed. He is money as it relates to these predictions. He had Paris Johnson Jr. going to the Cardinals this time last year. He had them straight up passing on Will Anderson Jr. Told us at the Combine they were going to pass and they were going to trade down and told us at the Combine this year they love Marvin Harrison Jr. He has not backed off of that. Damon Dog, let's see Albright's mock draft. Now, it comes with some caveats here. He's got some notes. I'm going to read them here. But in this top 12-ish of uh, mock drafts, of course, Caleb Williams to the Bears, that's a lock. He believes, Bo, the commanders are going to probably go with Jaden Daniels, although Drake may not. J.J. McCarthy could make that uncomfortable. Okay, so he feels really confident about the first two picks. But then he gets to the Patriots, and he's saying right now it's a coin flip, whether or not they take Drake May or they trade down. He says it changes every day. So – Maybe the Vikings are getting to the Patriots to some degree. I think that would be a mistake. If hell, if, the, if Drake May is good enough for the Vikings, why isn't he good enough for the Pats? So he, in the sake of this mock, he does have the Patriots sticking and picking, which means that has no hesitation or reservation about this. If the Patriots, he believes, passes on a trade offer from the Minnesota Vikings, he thinks it's done with the Cardinals. Now he didn't specify what that package looks like. We're going to be under the assumption. It's the three ones, maybe plus something else. The Cardinals trade with the Vikings, who we know want to come up for J.J. McCarthy. Then, quote, they come back up either draft day or on the clock or whenever to get Marvin Harrison Jr. from the Chargers at pick five. So what was just suggested in our Super Chat is a reality for Benjamin Albright in his mock. He says the Cardinals, we know this, quote, love Marvin Harrison Jr. He is their number one receiver unequivocally. So again, if you're scoring at home in this mock bow, he has the Cardinals going from four to 11, then using ammunition. And we don't know what that would be to go from 11 to five. Jim Harbaugh gets the trade down that he wants. The Cardinals get the receiver they want, plus a little extra. So those first five picks, break it down. What do you think? Yeah, I mean, what he basically said about the the Patriots is who's making the decision? Who's the decision maker for the Patriots? Is it Elliot Wolf or is it somebody else? Uh, because, you know, Wolf has been tied to McCarthy and then said the Vikings are content with either one of them. They, they actually love multiple quarterbacks in this draft. So they would, even if McCarthy goes off the board at three, that they would try to get up the draft board regardless at four to find their next franchise quarterback. And then how electric would that be? Uh, it, it would be devastating. And then at, at the very same token, like 10 minutes later, electric, if the Arizona Cardinals pulled off the deal to get back up, to five and then get Marvin Harrison Jr. I still am a little curious why, you know, I understand that Jim Harbaugh wants to accumulate draft capital for the future, but the deal wouldn't rival what Monty Osfort would get potentially from the Vikings. But Harbaugh would just be content with getting whatever he could for five. So he would drop to 11. It, it just seems that seems a little unrealistic to me. Like if the Arizona Cardinals, they negotiate a deal with the Vikings for three first round picks as the baseline, and then probably some change in there that the Arizona Cardinals could pull off a deal the very next pick to get back up the draft board. That's not just going to completely wipe out what you acquired from the from the Vikings. I mean, I think you would you would give them a first next year. And one of the first this year, right? Or maybe not. I don't even know. Let's talk it through. You get right. 11 23 and a 2025 20, one. Right. And you'd have to go then from 11 to five. What are you giving up in that scenario? Are you giving up? I think what up? people would assume is you would give up 11 and 23 and you would probably keep your future first and whatever day two, day three pick you receive from the Vikings. Yeah. I mean, in hindsight, it's best case scenario, but that's a lot of moving parts. And but again, something if you're a Chargers fan, if you're a member of the Chargers organization, you're dealing with the same thing that you and I have drawn the line in the sand on for the Arizona but Cardinals. But there's no QB tax now. 
There is no QB pick. tax, but there is the top player in the. It's like Jim Harbaugh said. It's like the number one pick in the draft. It's the number one non quarterback on the board that you're gift wrapping, wrapping, and you're you're giving at a discounted price, a, a discount price that's very apparent to everybody. Because minutes before that, you're seeing what the price tag is it to go from eleven to four, and and people, are, you know, Chargers fans are going to be like. What the hell? That's what you got for five? Right. And it's just one pick difference? Yeah, and you're trying to have your cake and eat it too. It's very risky. It's never been done before. Like, we're dealing in uncharted waters where the, the fourth pick has never been this valuable. And nobody, I in my recent memory, I can't remember anybody trading down and trading back up the next, next pick. Like, right. again, you want to do that. If you're the Arizona Cardinals, you have to have this, you have to have your deal done with Minnesota like yesterday. And then you spend the next three weeks outlining a package for the Chargers that they feel comfortable with. But I, it's, a, it's listen, it's great on the surface. It's, it's, you know, it's great. A free trip to Hawaii is great on the surface. And then yeah. you read the fine print and it's like, wait a minute here. Is this a Ponzi scheme? This feels like a Ponzi <laughs> scheme. Well, I mean, it's, it's trying to bluff your way into that deal, right? It, I mean, because really, the Vikings have to have the fear of God in them that some team's going to hurdle them potentially to get JJ McCarthy or draft. Well, JJ real McCarthy. quick to your point, Albright said unequivocally in the mock, if McCarthy falls to them at six, they will take him. The Giants. Like that's that's but happened. He also said he didn't think that the Giants were willing to pay to get up the draft board, that they were just going to sit at six. So it's just like if you're a general manager and you're working the phones. And you and, and like Benjamin Albright, who's an NFL insider who, who I trust, right? If he knows this, I would think that people who are in, in, the, in a front office position in the NFL would know that the Cardinals one love Marvin Harrison Jr. They're not going to take a quarterback. We know that, right? And then we also know that the Giants aren't going to come up. So, like, if you're the Vikings, like, you do you call their bluff and maybe just you work just out a deal until the work out a deal with the chargers and you're not paying you know the premium tax i mean it's probably what they're figuring out right now i mean in all honesty like that's what's happening yeah um but he's albright's adamant that there will be a trade for mccarthy within the top five picks yeah three four or five and um, i believe that because you're right yeah. like if, if if the giants can sit around and do nothing and they can have a franchise caliber quarterback fall in their lap they're not going to not take them. But at the same time, are they willing to pay the price to get up? Doesn't if, sound like it. But if you're hardballing Minnesota and Minnesota's, you know, they're like, you know what? We've heard the Giants are just going to stick and pick. Well, you can stick it to them real quick by saying, okay, New York Giants, give us your third round pick for JJ for the rights to JJ McCarthy. And we'll, we like Malik Neighbors and Marvin Harrison Jr. the same. We're just going to get an extra pick. Right. The, Vik the Vikings, to me, at the end of the day, they, they can call all the bluffs they want. Until the Cardinals pick is in and the clock runs out, right. they can't feel good about anything because the Giants are there and they pose an immediate threat and the Cardinals are the first team out of the top three that's or top four that's not going to take a quarterback unequivocally. So they can dick around all they want. Cardinals could easily call up the brass for the Giants and say, we're going to give you a deal. This is 75% off, no QB tax. Give us your third round pick. What, why does it matter to us? We just had Malik Neighbors in the building. We love Malik Neighbors. We'll take he or Marvin, whatever's available. And then you call up the folks in Minnesota yeah. and you tell them what's about to happen. I mean, then you're basically starting a war with the. With well, that's what they're, they're, what they're doing right now. I'm assuming <laughs> right. that's what they're doing right now. Let's get back right. to this top. This top 12 is wild, yeah. not just with the Cardinals. So the Cardinals go hypothetically, let's see it, Damon Dog. Uh, hypothetically, they go from four to 11, back to five. We He didn't expand on compensation we'll try to get albright on the show before the draft itself um to expand but so the cardinals get mhj the chargers trade down the giants again they're going to take malik neighbors if he's there or marvin harrison jr unless jj mccarthy falls to them or the cardinals can find a way to do a deal with the giants so the giants are going to go offense they're going to go mccarthy or one of the two receivers then i mean he's going chalk for a little bit he's got joe alt going to the titans saying the Chargers might be a little dicey on Joe Alt, Bo, and they have no issue going down into the early teens for, for an offensive lineman that they potentially want. But Titans and Joe Alt feel like a match made in heaven, as does, he said, Dallas Turner to the Falcons. He goes, edge rusher is expected. Dallas Turner or Jared Verse, which tells me, Bo, 
If you're considering an edge rusher here, you should also consider going from 8 to 11 because you know the Chicago Bears want to go offense. You know the Jets potentially want to go offense. So if you're I don't necessarily Atlanta, agree with that. I, I think that after Chicago takes their quarterback 1-1, one, 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 I think that they're in play for the first defensive player. Well, okay, so let, let me back up for a second. I guess in my scenario, if the Cardinals go from 11 to 8 to take Roma Dunze, yeah. the Bears aren't going to take an offensive player because – all and the three receivers are gone. So yeah, right. I correct myself. So Keep then you've got Bowers going to the Jets, which seems so trendy right now. I like I'm I'm in disbelief that it's gonna happen, but but who the hell knows? <sighs> and then this is kind of shocking. Alu Fashion who reenters the equation as OT number two in this scenario, even though we saw the Chargers working out JC Latham extensively at Bama's Pro Day. Fuaga is a fast riser to everybody. And then he's got the L.A. Rams coming up from, what, 18 or 19 with the Broncos for Jared Verse, who, you know, Jared Verse is re-entering the equation, I guess, is a top 15 pick. Basically saying that, the the re, real quick to recap, the Raiders are not trading up. The Broncos would like to trade up. They don't have the ammo. So the, the Broncos' decision then is, let's trade back and get more assets. And then maybe you can justify a Bo Nix with the Rams pick, a Michael Penix Jr., Somebody like that. So the Rams right. being aggressive coming up for an edge rusher. What are your thoughts on these picks? My head is spinning. It's I'm wild, spinning. isn't it? Yeah, it is. It is. Um, and like once you thought that maybe the, the draft might kind of ease into what we've been looking at all off season long, all draft season long, like, no, no, not so fast. It's going to get even crazier with yeah. all this moving and shaking, getting up the draft board. It's, it, it is a wild scenario that, Benjamin Albright has has outlined, but he's you know he, he's probably got some sort of insight that you know the Rams really like what the pass rusher out of Florida State brings and Jared Verse and especially with he's right there and Denver covers this team the Denver Broncos firsthand uh, that if a couple you know the first four quarterbacks are off the board Sean Payton and, and George Payton are gonna get at it yeah they're gonna drop down and they're gonna try to accumulate more assets. And get into that as they as they kind of are in the beginning of a rebuild. Threw around, you know, Quinion Mitchell. He threw around Terry on Arnold for that pick. Which, if you're a Broncos fan, like how many corners do you need to still suck? <laughs> I, I you have Patrick Sertain. Like, right. what's another corner going to do yeah. for you? But to each their own, I guess. In a tap, that's what I'm saying. Like, this is a receiver tackle rich draft. I don't want to talk to anybody about a corner in the top twelve to fifteen. Like, you can always sell me on pass rusher if you believe that they're special, but. I don't know. It's wild. I'm going to tell you what else is wild. That if if that happens with the Cardinals scenario and they're a, you come away, any scenario you come away with Marvin is great, is elite. You come away with Marvin in an extra pick that you did not have. I mean, like Austin Ford enters like the legendary status that he's taken right. on on Twitter after that flight plan video reemerged. Like, right. At, at that point, like, do people even take his phone call anymore? He, he's become a savant with trading and trading up, trading down. He'd, he'll have done it in back-to-back -back years, which I, I checked this out, has not been done in the modern NFL era. Right. Never has a team traded out of the top 10 and traded back up in the same top 10 in back-to-back -back years. It's the first time that would ever have been done. I mean, the 31 GMs start ghosting him. Is that what you're saying? I, mean, <laughs> I think so. Now, this year it's different. We outlined it yesterday. Why? Right. Everybody will take Austin Ford's phone call because what? Because he has all the picks. And That's these right. teams that want extra picks, of course. But like in future years when we're just playing with chalk and they've got one through seven, like nobody's taking his call. Right. No, you don't want to. It's it he's like the guy, he's the he's the the killer in scream, right? Like if he's calling you, it's it's bad news on the other end of that line. You drew Barrymore in the <laughs> open. <laughs> Topic 64, 999, Super Chat. Maybe we need to grab our wide receivers early. Yeah, there's no maybe about it. You absolutely do. Because waiting until the third or fourth, it'll be a lot of Hakeem Butler's, Andy Isabella's left. There is a sense of urgency for receivers in this draft. Absolutely. Like, here's here's a good point, though, Topic 64, and I'll pose this to Bo. It's like, can you wait on defense in this draft? I think you might be able to. I Like, I, I watched a, a thing on, on Chris Jenkins, and Harbaugh said he's one of the most positive – people he's ever been around the history of coaching football. wow jim it's harbaugh like, had something nice to say about one of his former players well, yeah, but he was just like, like just football character out the ass right like somebody yeah. you'd love to have in your locker room like could you get are you gonna get players like that in the third round 
with with the surplus on receivers and tackles? I think yes. I think this is I think you get your your premium positions offensively first and then you let everything else fall to you. And, and you're going to have the capital to do so, right? I mean, you you if you just figure it out in the first, if you just I mean, you keep it you could keep it simple even though we're talking about just there's, there's not even simple about them, right? in, in the first <laughs> round, right? Uh yeah, I mean, I I think that it's like the defensive players in this draft. It's it's not it's not elite, right? It's not top heavy, but the depth, it's it's you you really have to like it. Like we talked about these defensive linemen, the interior defensive linemen, and Baldy told you that he's big on Johnny Newton, and we've seen the rise as far as Byron Murphy the second, and then we also like the guys like Jenkins. We like Tavondre Sweat. Uh, you know, the Cardinals are bringing in the kid from Northern Iowa to cut to do a top thirty visit. Uh, and we'll get to other top 30 visits the Cardinals that, we, that we've added to the list. But you, you like the depth like all the way through. It, it's just – it's steady. And you can find pro-ready players even though they're not like top-level guys. Yeah. Like to fill out your roster. And like, again, if one of them pops, great. But I th- like go find the equivalent of Michael Wilson at defensive tackle in the third round, right? It would be pretty good. Uh, right. DD dollar 99 super chat hashtag draft all tune QB two. Uh, I saw a top 10 list DD <laughs> that had the Cardinals having like a top 10 backup in not Clayton tune, but the recently signed Desmond Ritter. But I'm with you. I think, oh. I think tunes going to let it rip in the preseason. I'm more fired up now to watch the preseason. Than I have been, but Joe alt, I think there's a better chance. Joe alt's a Cardinal than Malik neighbors. How about that? just because of where this whole thing's going to fall. But I don't know. MHJ or bus for me at this point. I just, I just love his loyalty to the tune squad. No, that, it's great. That's all you, you can, you can really appreciate that. How about Greg jumping in with a $2 super chat? Uh, OGs as draft party sponsor. If we don't take MHJ at the draft party, um, we'll have to check in that. I don't, I don't know what the rules are as far as cannabis. And I would just say go straight to, are we going to have like a private bar or I think we have a private bar in our section of our, our draft suite. I think you just go straight to the private bar. Yeah. Point. Well, I mean, if the scenario like Benjamin Albright outline, like you're going to be going through a roller coaster of emotions. Yeah. Of course you're going to have to have ease those things, ease those emotions with a couple pops. We're going to need a beer funnel for me. Just yeah. to just, well, you and Johnny, just like, pour. I'm going to be have, I'm going to have to carry the show. You might. Well, you guys are just like production. You're out. You're just you're gonna be, like if they trade down and there's no report of a trade back up, like you guys will be inconsolable for at least. I'm gonna twelve pass minutes. Out. I'm gonna pass out. Yeah, you would pass out. You and Britain will have to do the show. <laughs> me and Johnny. Well, will be, yeah, it'll be tough up. for me to like for our audio listeners like to articulate what's what I'm witnessing on the screen. Yeah. Like, you'll, well, I mean, you'll be openly weeping. Loss of words. I've never been at a loss for words since we've done this podcast that I'll be just be sitting there in bated breath. I'll be looking at my phone. I'll be checking sources. I'll be watching the TV and it'll be like, where's the trade up? Where is it? And then the chargers and it says pick is in. And then just, I might, it's it's going to be okay. The Arizona Cardinals have have traded down and we're like, Hey Damon, can we see the trade package? Damon, can we see the trade package? (laughs) And he's just going to be sitting, just staring blankly into a computer screen. Damon, wake up. (laughs) I'm going to be delusional at first. Like I'll, I'll start being like, Nope, that didn't happen. Actually. This is, this is an alternate broadcast. (laughs) And then Uh, it just cuts to black because he pulled the plug. Deuce is back. Another super chat. $2. If we get alt guaranteed 10 win season next year, (laughs) Joe alt at four. (laughs) Baldy's fine with Joe alt at four deuce. Right. Like, and I, had I only well, he said he thinks eight tackles or eight offensive linemen go go in the first round. It's like you got eight tackles or offensive linemen go to the first round. You've got, I think, easily six wide receivers. I mean, that's 14 of the 32 picks. There are two positions. Good. And then let's say probably what you want to say, four or five quarterbacks. Let's go five. Five quarterbacks. I mean, that's 19 of the 32 picks. Well, let's take a corner at 11. Let's take a defensive tackle at 11. Like, that makes me physically ill. I don't want to do that. <laughs> like, I, the next mock that I see that somebody's, like, trading down, taking a defender at 11, I don't take that person seriously. I don't want to take that person seriously. Junior, Mo's going to need to take Johnny and David's car keys away after this draft. Yeah, no doubt about it. 
Um, topic 64, 499. Tell the Vikes or the Chargers to pound sand. I agree. That moving around stuff sounds tricky. Hold the line at pick four. Hold the line. <laughs> Um, I was going to say, uh, we need Deuce and Didi. Like, we need that type of intensity on the line. Yeah. You know, like the, the tune intensity, the Joe all that four intensity. That's commitment. Like, no, it is. But we need you to be putting that towards a common goal that right. we all have. And like, we, we got spots. We do. <laughs> the problem with the Vikings is pick 11 is just not good enough. It's shit. It's in this draft for me, <laughs> like you have a, you have a top eight pick. You're getting a tackle or a wide receiver of legitimacy, Pro Bowl potential immediately. Eleven doesn't do anything for is me. Is there is there a scenario where we're sitting there on Friday at the uh, before we start our day two coverage, and I'm we're we're sitting at the introductory press conference for the two picks, and Monty Osterford is like, "You guys really thought I was going to trade out of an opportunity to get Marvin Harrison Jr.?" No, because he passed on Will Anderson Jr. last year. That's not he the passed- same type of prospect. Well, you know that it's it's not Mar- it, Marvin Harrison Jr. versus Will Anderson Jr. As far as the caliber of prospects, like it's not even close. Yeah, but I think they value edge rushers more than receivers. So I think that you make up a little bit of ground there. I think what Austin Ford did last year showed you he he wants more picks. He always wants more picks. I don't think he'll glow. I think he'll say we had a, if it comes down to that. No, he would, never, offers, he would never. He would never. He'll say we had offers. We weighed the offers. At the end of the day, it was better for our franchise to ensure we got Marvin. And you know what? I will respect the hell out of him because that is the right decision. There was but, at one point. At one point, I'm taking this from you, but at one point, this organization, there were people in this organization that felt like you can't pass on Marvin Harrison Jr. But that was before there was a team that was sitting there with two first round picks in this. This is the most. This is the most valuable fourth overall pick ever in the history of the, the NFL draft. Ever right. in the history of the draft, so that's what they're. That's what you're. It's the immovable object next to whatever. What's the stupid saying? That's what this is. So, yeah, I don't. I don't envy his position in, unless he nails it. Libertarian Sasquatch, dollar ninety nine seems like a lot of work to get thir- thirteen to twenty pick in twenty twenty five. Yeah, because that's where it's going to be. Like if you like, if I told you Sasquatch that the Vikings were like the seventh seed in the NFC playoffs. Like no one would be surprised by that. And they, maybe they got like the Cowboys in the first round who always choke and they win a playoff game. Like, <laughs> like JJ McCarthy wins a playoff game. Like they throws would, it, he throws it 15 times. Right. And they, right. they, Kevin O'Connell just out schemes Mike McCarthy with no Dan Quinn. And they like, you could sell me on that. What, after what I saw the Houston Texans do this year, the Cardinals should absolutely factor that into what, any trade would be with the Vikings. I say, I feel like I say this every show. When is the last time the Vikings were like a, an embarrassing team where they're picking in the top 10 to 12? It doesn't happen. And they have to just, they have too many good players and their coach is good. Yeah. Charlie jumping back in a resident chargers fan with some insight. Uh, I think Arizona is playing dangerous game. If they plan the trade to five, if they trade down and trade up to five, Jim Harbaugh said that the trade chart goes out the window if quarterbacks go one through four. Look, the trade chart, I've already set that thing on fire. Like the, the trade chart is no longer our compass as far as what what it, what value it is getting up the draft board. I also think you're playing a dangerous game trying to do a deal with Jim Harbaugh. I think just in general, I think that's very that's dangerous on the clock. Like you tr- and then everybody knows you love Marvin, that you need Marvin. You trade down and you expect Jim Harbaugh just to do a deal with you. That, that, Especially with, the, with arguably the most talented player in the draft on the board. I like who's to say he doesn't do a deal with the Chicago Bears instead and goes from five to nine and gets a, a top 10 player. You know, I you got to be real careful where you think that you're you've got a made bed for a top pick just because you have all these other picks. I, the closer we get to this draft, I think it's the opposite of last year. And what I mean by that is last year, Cardinals and some other teams couldn't wait to move down. Uh-huh. Peter Skaronsky and some of these players that were going to be like, they couldn't wait to move down. This year, I think it's going to be different. I think the, the closer we get to this draft, people are going to hold on to their picks for dear life because this top 10 is so rich with blue chip talent. That was not the case last year. We had Tyree Wilson went in the top 10 last year. 
There's no Tyree fucking Wilson in this draft for you to, to, to go in the top 10. We don't have to talk ourselves for a, a what we play in the ACC big 12. And he had like four sacks and people were like, he, that guy, big 12. he could go third overall. We're not doing that shit this year. So we closer we get, we have 22 days left. Teams are going to go like this. It's like, Oh, I, I, I love picks, but you know what I, else I love elite picks that are available to me now. Picks right. in Malik neighbors, Marvin, Impact Joel, Vickers. Roma Dunze, Brock yeah. Bowers. Like, you know, those, those guys don't come around every year. Right. You're not tr- you aren't watering that down. No competent GM is watering that down. Yeah. I, I've got guys that the tape tells me they're going to be good. Their stats, their production tell me they're going to be good. They're taking all the heavy lifting, all the homework you have to do on prospects out of the equation. And they're going to be guys in the outside of the top five that are going to be down to down big time impact makers at premium positions. Like that's, that's what this draft has. You sell me on a future first. Great. You know what? That first round could look like 2013 that for those first 10 picks could look, could look like ass. Uh, ID the Mike dollar 99. If we get Marv or Brian Thomas jr. I'm happy. I, Brian Thomas jr. Would have to come. I don't even know. But at pick eleven, I think you. Yeah. I think you could take Brian Thomas Jr. at pick eleven. But I yeah, think yeah, if the you'd have to be wide receiver four, and you'd have to start that run on wide receivers after the the first one ended in the top ten. But Mike, they didn't. They haven't brought him in for a, a visit. That doesn't mean that they that they won't or they wouldn't still take him. But I would I would assume if he was in consideration for their first pick, they would have brought him into the facility. Yeah, already. Topic 64, jumping back in with a 499 super chat. Thank you, Topic 64, for the program. At Charlie, your Chargers think that the they're nickel slick. They're not getting MHJ. We are, though. So, all right. I like the Talk friendly banter between uh, some, some of our loyal listeners and viewers. Super chat banter. I love it. <laughs> Patrick T, $2. Harbaugh equals a wild card. Uh, could backfire so bad. Look at that um, hashtag. Hold the line, HTL. Wow, we got a hashtag for Damon's hold the line. Right <laughs> Are you getting emotional reading that, Damon? I just, I just love, I love all the good people that are holding the line with me. Yeah, you know, it started off just one guy, and we're just growing by the day, and we will, we will not. Uh, I mean, history will remember us in, in a positive <laughs> light. They will trust guys like Johnny <laughs> and myself are going to be remembered not well. Uh, guys who I, did not non line holders. Did you see this? So Baharo three, I want to bring this super or this uh, chat up. So Jordan Schultz, friend of this program, casually just co-hosting the herd with Colin Coward the other day. I don't know if you saw this and, and he's got tremendous insight. Jordan's breaking stories left and right, by the way. Right. And he said, Johnny Bo Jordan said on the, on the herd, he strongly believes the giants are taking a QB. If Monty uh, trying to drive up the price on them, I think Monty is using the giants as leverage against the Vikings and he should. I think the I think the Vikings, if they're not getting JJ McCarthy, I think like Michael Penix or Bonix could become a New York Giant for sure. So I, I agree with that. But I anybody who's who's ready to like just say like the Vikings aren't, or excuse me, the Giants aren't taking McCarthy, like I'm not things change. And if you talk yourself into JJ McCarthy bowl over these next three weeks, yeah, suddenly you could present a package to the Cardinals that they like, that they'll do. Yeah. I, I just can't believe like they're gonna have Daniel Jones on the roster. What they sign like Drew Lock, like it's just a it's an abomination of a. You could you could take role. a big cap hit on Daniel Jones for one year and just outright cut yeah. him. It's terrible. It's just a bad bad room. And then we saw where they're horrible on the offensive line. Like you've got probably you're sitting there in prime position to get the best tackle off the board, and they're sitting there trying to figure out their their quarterback of the future. That's why getting a quarterback in this league is is priority number one. That's why we're seeing the Patriots are no are, are very rarely included in the conversation as far as trade down candidates because they've identified a prospect that they believe could be a franchise quarterback. And they're like, you know what? We'd rather take our, our chances with that instead of accumulating more draft capital, which would help kickstart a rebuild. But it, it doesn't matter if you're these teams because like Denver Broncos have been they've had plenty of picks and they've hit on plenty of picks, but they haven't hit on a quarterback. And they're in this like purgatory and they can't get out of it unless they find that guy who can get under center. Like I I'll have to believe it when I see it. If Drake may done become a Patriot, like you'll have, you'll have to just wake me out of a comatose state. If that, happen. like <laughs> the Mayflower, 
Drake Drake May, who is <laughs> in the Patriots' backyard, who is the co-number one with right. Caleb Williams for much of this year, that people love, that think they elevated a bad UNC team, fits like the physicality piece. Maybe Buffalo's become vulnerable. Like you don't dick around with that with more picks. You just take Drake May. They're gonna take Drake May. Yeah. And then JJ McCarthy. And then there's gonna be a bidding war for JJ McCarthy. Like I see Viking fans in the chat saying. Vikings aren't coming up to pick four for JJ McCarthy. What do you, what we'll see. Enjoy your 2,900 yards and your 22 <laughs> touchdowns in the big 10. Cause that, I think, I think that's happening. Vikings right. fans, whether it's four or five or wherever you're, you're coming up for JJ McCarthy. You have shown your, like your, your talk, talk is cheap. Kevin O'Connell, you have shown your hand. You right. have two first round picks that of your own creation, right? This draft season. What do you like? Come on. No one believes what you say. Right. You're not going to just stick and pick and then just like bide your time for a full season. You just went through half of a season without a starting caliber quarterback. I'm sure you got a little Lynn Sanity run from Josh Dobbs. We know it, that that's got a very short shelf life. We do. We do. By the way, Damon Dog, uh, before you went on that little little rant there, like he dropped, I, I get the nickname, but it, the Mayflower is a, is awful nickname. The Mayflower is coming to Boston it's now. Terrible. Landon, I, like so, it a lot. I like it a lot. Damon, so that crazy. Made Did you steal that from somebody? Uh, my my roommates who are Patriots fans came up with it. Oh, uh, that's tr- fantastic. Yeah. What's bad about it. that? The Mayflower? Yeah. The Mayflower is coming to Boston, no, boys. It's just bad. I'm going to go grab some Duncan and watch the Mayflower dominate. Everybody get to the car. Let's go to Gillette Stadium and watch the Mayflower. That's, that's perfect. We're going to get to the Cardinals' top 30 picks, who they've had on offense or defense. A notable first-round pick making its way to the Cardinals for a top 30 visit. But uh, in the meantime, you should visit our friends at Gila River Resorts and Casinos, the home of the 2024 PHNX Cardinals draft party on April 25th. Um, I'm here to tell you, party sold out. Party sold out as of now. Now, we do have some tickets to give out. We've got roughly six tickets to give away but in the meantime, again, if you're coming, awesome. If not, still time to go check out the premier Arizona largest casino sports book with our friends at Gila River Resorts and Casinos. It's an authentic, immersive experience. One of the best casinos I've ever been to, Arizona, Vegas, notwithstanding, wherever you want to go. State-of-the-art gaming floor has it all with over 800 slot machines, 15 blackjack tables, live table games, and more. I hosted... With my guy Bo Brock, with my guy, you know, Damon Dog on on football Sundays, Britain Golden. I was at this casino every other Sunday for for home games. It was never a point where I was there, Bo, and I felt like this is not clean. This wasn't a great environment that I wouldn't want to be at all day. This right. is a place that I feel comfortable gambling at, having a good time with my family at. It's it's like a resort because it's in the title, but emphasis on resort. Because not only do they have their casino, they've got a fantastic pool. Grab a cocktail. Perfect cocktail season by the pool now. April here in Arizona. They've got honey and vine. They've got the all-new Santan Mountain experience, which is fantastic. If you have not checked out, looked yourself, an overnight stay at Gila River Resorts and Casinos, I've had people who are coming to the draft party both message me and say, like, this place looks fire. I'm just going to book a trip to Gila River Resorts and Casinos. I'm going to extend from the draft party. There's going to yep. be people there for the draft party, and then they're going to be there Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And you know what? You love to see it. Yeah, you, you love to see it. They take uh, they show you what the next level is all about. Achieve legendary status UBU at Gila River Resorts and Casinos. Can't wait to see everybody in about three weeks at the draft party. Uh, Diamondbacks off to a hot start. They didn't exactly – it was a rough end to the game today, but – what, 25,000 people at a 12:40 first pitch on a weekday game? I mean, uh, somebody who's hit me up for tickets said hit up Game Time. Game Time is where you can find last-minute deals on tickets around the Valley. You got the Final Four this weekend. You got the Suns tonight. You can get into the Suns game tonight for $61. You can go to see the Suns play basketball tonight for $61. Bucks. You got the Coyotes as well. They got tickets available for you at 82 bucks. Uh, how about uh, Phoenix Rising? Some of the greatest, the biggest concert music acts coming through town. You can get tickets at game time right now. Don't miss out and save some money while you're doing so. When you sign up, when you make your first purchase, you just sign up for an account. You put in the code PHNX and you're going to get 20 bucks off your first purchase with game time. Lowest price guarantee, event cancellation protection. Uh, you got to check out everything going on with game time. We love game time. Uh, they are the perfect partner here for us here at PHNX Sports, pushing all these great teams around the Valley, and game time gets you in to see those teams firsthand. 
Uh, leave a like on this video, almost 500 live. Let's get this show to 400 plus uh, likes today. Love chopping it up with our friends in the chat. Love chopping it up with one Chop Robinson, who, <laughs> according to sources on Twitter, is going to take a top 30 visit with the Arizona Cardinals. Confirmed top 30 visits on the defensive side Ooh. include first round caliber picks Chop Robinson, Terion Arnold. Um, and then everybody else in that group, I would say, is firmly a day two or day three pick led by Taylor Upshaw of uh, U of A. Of course, Brownlee from Louisville, Jonathan Gannon's alma mater, former secondary player at Louisville of his own right, Bo. So Chop Robinson, what does he do for you? And is he an option if he makes it to pick 27 for Arizona? Yeah, Chop Robinson, obviously the skill set that you want, right? Athletically, physically, what he what he possesses is, is what you look for like look for from an edge, right? And he he showed up as far as the combine and did exactly what he needed to do to put himself in a conversation for a first round pick. Now he, he still might be on the outside looking in. And if he's there at 35, the Arizona Cardinals, they've done their homework on him and they like the sub four, five, 40 guy who's got the good size length that you want from an edge rusher. And I think he would look nice opposite BJ Ujolari and being an instant upgrade at a position that they severely need to address that haven't done so this off season. So chop Robinson is, is probably the first legit edge rusher that they've been tied to this off season, all off season long. Uh, I'm a big fan of his game, but I'm a big fan of it in the latter half of the first round. I don't want any part of Chop Robinson respectfully at 11. I think 23, right. 27, uh, you know, not a ton of production as you outlined before, Bo, but he has the physical tools that I, I would trust Jonathan Gannon with his development. Like I used to kind of sit there and fret when you would give somebody with, let's say, a lack of resume, Isaiah Simmons to somebody like Vance Joseph. I don't feel that way at all with, with Nick Rallis and Jonathan Gannon. So those are the top 30 visits on defense. Not a lot of star power. Where's the star power? It's on the offensive side. Here are the top 30 visits for the Arizona Cardinals on the offensive side of the football, and it's led by one Marvin Harrison Jr., who will be in Tempe in the next 24 to 48 hours later this week, confirmed by NFL Network Ian Rappaport. Marvin Harrison Jr., who was followed by Malik Neighbors and Roma Dunsey. Malik Neighbors was just here yesterday. Roma Dunsey's already had, I believe, his um, top 30 visit, or it's uh, it's upcoming. Regardless, the Cardinals have had, I don't know, one, two, three, four, five, six top 30 visits with wide receivers. Now, the latter, Xavier Worthy, Jacob Cowing, and Bre uh, Brendan Rice, I think are guys that you would consider on day two, certainly, especially somebody like Brendan Rice, who I think most of us feel like is a third round pick. But the, I mean, we're, we're playing in two, two ponds here. We got the big three and the latter three, followed by J.C. Latham, who I think would absolutely be an option, maybe a pick 23 if he were to fall, certainly a 27. I don't love that at, at 11. And then Dylan Johnson, the running back um, for Washington that I, I would imagine is going to be a fringe third, fourth round pick. Well, yeah, I mean the wide receivers that they're having in for visits, they're they're covering every single base you can possibly cover. Yeah. One, the stick and pick and take Marvin Harrison Jr. Uh, the other guys and neighbors and a Dunze, guys that you would trade down and then trade back up potentially for, and then you've got guys you know that you would take a, as a second receiver in this draft, like you mentioned with Worthy or Brennan Rice or with Jacob Cowing. Like those are guys that they would add as depth pieces like cowing as as depth is at the slot position uh maybe even worthy who's got the, the the speed you talked about and then brendan rice who's just a guy who's got a, a, a he's physically and athletically an nfl caliber receiver that that needs to kind of who's a little too raw right now despite him being the son of the greatest receiver of all time and jerry rice so you know, you you love to see it because they're going to address the wide receiver in some sort of way, if not multiple ways in this draft. And that's what your top 30 visits show you as far as this class so far. We've got 16 of the 30 visits. There's 14 more that either A, haven't been reported, but we're going to try our best to uncover them between now and draft week. we got some breaking news here we're going to get to in just a little bit, but let's jump to a couple super chats here from my guy, Charlie Sinclair, $1.99. Said I changed, think Neighbors is their guy. Well, Charlie, we talked about it yesterday. I, I think Harbaugh prefers Neighbors, and I don't have that source or anything. And listen, I, I would prefer that too because that gives the Cardinals a, an avenue to get Marvin beyond pick four. 
But I just feel like neighbors and and the way he plays football emulates so much of what they had in Anquan Bolden in route to the Super Bowl. Like I, the Cardinals and Drew Petzin want to go vertical with their passing game, and I think that lends itself to the size and the ability and the smooth route running of the Marvin Harrison Jr. When I think of Malik Neighbors, I think of like a Debo Samuel, Anquan Bolden, almost like a running back playing receiver. Jet sweeps right. If you're gonna splurge, splurge on a wideout. If you're Jim Harbaugh, you're gonna go with a guy who prides himself on immense physicality. Right. You want to have an identity on your team. And like, listen, I think Marvin Harrison Jr. is a much better prospect and soon to be player than Mike Williams. But Mike Williams and Marvin Harrison Jr., I think I have a lot of similarities with their game. They got they just got rid of Mike Williams, right? They got rid of Keenan Allen. Like, I think neighbors with with Justin Herbert is a really good fit. But I, I honestly think like Jim's gonna do whatever he can to trade down because the offensive line class is too robust. Jim knows, Bo, if he takes a receiver at five. Having to wait all the way to the second round to get a tackle or a guard, that's going to kill him. That's going to eat him inside. Yeah. yeah, and I think he he understands that they're like the Cardinals. They're they're more than just a wide receiver away. Like they 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 need to stockpile some some assets, and they need to put themselves in a position to to improve this roster that they haven't been able to do. That they've been trying to get out of cap hell all off season long. So it's it's a it's not is is you know. Big of a rebuild is the Cardinals, but it's a rebuild in a similar fashion where they've got the quarterback position figured out, and then everything else is is expendable and, and, and on the table as far as wheeling and dealing as far as Jim Harbaugh is concerned. Charlie, again, four ninety nine. Look at the architect type the Ravens have drafted. Brown, Bateman, Flowers, Neighbors, also Johnny with the Anquan Bolden comp sold <laughs> me. Uh, I mean, I think Anquan and... and and um, Jamar Chase are good comps for Malik Neighbors. And I don't think that that's too lofty of an expectation. When a lot of people think he's the 1A to 1B with Marvin, if we're throwing around comps like Mike Evans and A.J. Green and Julio Jones for Marvin, I think it's appropriate. Like Malik Neighbors and, and Jamar Chase are like the same built, the same size. Yeah. And the difference is Malik Neighbors played his most recent season of college football, whereas Jamar Chase sat out. It was that COVID year, right? So – I think it, you could make an argument he's an even safer prospect than that, than, than Jamar Chase was coming out. So it's a good problem to have. I just feel like, Bo, the Cardinals' preference would be if there's somebody bigger with our quarterback who's undersized, whereas right. Herbert's 6'5", we're going to go with the bigger receiver, and that's not right. a knock on Malik Neighbors. No, I mean, it, it just makes it – I think your hit rate goes up, right? When you're just betting on players who are blue-chip caliber players who are – fit the, the mold, the size, the physicality, the athleticism, that if you have confidence in your coaching staff, that they're going to coach them up and put them in the position to be successful, right? And if, if they if they're worth their their lick, a lick as far as coaches, they're going to be able to get even a little bit out of them. And and guys like Marvin Harrison Jr. just take all kind of the you know the the hard work out of it. Like I think that they're they're guys that you can just get in and, and they're ready to hit the ground running at the NFL level and make an impact. Yeah, I just Marvin to me represents exactly what they want at the position. If it wasn't such a play, like even trade in that aspect of it, like okay, Marvin checks all the boxes, he's the perfect complement to Michael Wilson, then we'd have a different discussion. But there's no downside there. Uh, we have a little bit of breaking news. I say that tongue in cheek, Bo, because it's it's changing of some numbers, breaking news. And I think it's one of the most dirty changing of the numbers we've ever seen here. So um, Rondell Moore is gone. He was traded no. for a backup quarterback. He stole his Greg, whole flow. Greg Dorch is number four now for the Arizona Cardinals, who officially the team announced he's back on his one-year ten tenure, and he's repping, I believe, his college number or high school number or something. High school number, yeah. High school number. Greg Dorch steals Rondell Moore's job and his number, Bo. Care to react? Light it. <laughs> he would never do his boy that dirty. I mean, this is more Dorch trying to get back to his roots there in Richmond, Virginia, where he played, uh, you know, state championship level football. He took home the title, uh, I think, at what, Spring Hill High School. And he was wearing number four. And remember, uh, with uh, Kayvon Wallace was wearing number five. And they were just running off. They were killing it on offense, defense, and special teams. And number four was a menace. And now he's going to be continuing to be a menace to NF the NFC West teams. I like it. 
It's a huge upgrade from 83. I mean, he it was a personal it. thing to Rondell Moore, but let's not act like he didn't steal like everything from Rondell. Oh, that that's it's exactly Damon. Bo's trying to downplay this because he's always no. with Greg Dorch. No. That he stole his job and his number. And there's not much else he can do. Yeah. Absolutely. He took what was rightfully his that he well, yeah, earned. He, he, he earned, earned it. Yeah. By being yeah. good at football. He didn't, he wasn't gifted anything. And that's why everybody resonates and loves Greg Dorch. By the way, shout out to my guy, Blake Murphy, who had that screenshot on Twitter. I want to make sure I give him credit, but that's up on Greg Dorch's Instagram right now. But just think how, like, the, can we talk about it? It's pretty poetic. Everybody just, oh, Rondell's going to be the guy in the slot. And then Greg takes that <laughs> and takes all of his targets at the end of the year. Rondell's healthy at the end of the year and is upset he doesn't get more targets. And they're, Greg's winning them the game against the Eagles. Then they trade Rondell Moore a second round pick once upon a time for a backup quarterback. And Greg Dortch is like, I'll take that number four. I heard it's available. I'm taking it. it. It's tur- it's pretty, pretty dirty. The fit check for Greg Dortch and number four. Let's is, see it one more time. It's unbelievable. David. He had somebody mock this up. This is a mock up. It would have been so much better if somehow it was like a picture of Ron Dale with, with Greg Dorch's like head photoshopped onto it instead of like just the I had to make sure it wasn't. Game respects game. I'm gonna tell you right now, number two's open. Number two's open no, for it's Martin not. Harrison. Who's Mac, who's got number two? Mac Wilson's already got two. Okay, so my bad. So you got Kyler at number one, Mac Wilson at number two, Buddha, who liked that photo at number three, and Greg Dorch at number four. Prater at five, Connor at six, because uh, you're white at seven. seven. Eight's not available. Nine is Desmond Ritter. Ten is Pascal. What's and then no. eight's retired. No, I, I don't think anybody's wearing ten. Ten was Josh Woods last year, and I don't was think Zach been... Pascal ten or no? No, he's zero. Zero. That's what I'm thinking. I'm bad with numbers. Marvin. So 10. there's no single Love digit it. for Marvin. So Marvin's either going to be 18 or he's going to be his dad's number 88. That's my prediction. Man, I'm 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 happy for Greg Dorch. Four is a that's pretty awesome. Yeah. Chris Moore is 10. Chris mm-hmm. Moore, the new newly signed wide receiver for the Cardinals. 16 hey, Chris. Open. 16 hey, Chris. would be nice. Hey, Chris. Keep that. No, don't put let's yeah. put that in pencil right now, Chris. They're, they're, they haven't they haven't uh they haven't stitched on the numbers yet for Moore or BJ Ujolari next year. <laughs> Chris and BJ Ujolari, they're hoping for Byron Murphy at eleven. They're hoping for a trade down for a defensive tackle. Hell no. If I'm if I'm one of those guys and I'm getting like probably you know anywhere from twenty five to fifty G's just for a number. Eighty eight low toe Capone will be dirty. I would I would be awesome if Marvin took his dad's number. Yeah. I don't know if he will. Maybe he just feels like 18 was his college number. I could have my own legacy, but I'm going to the NFL. I'm playing, paying tribute to my dad. He's helped me so much. I've skipped draft season because of him. I'm going to rep number 88. But no single. I would have liked to have seen Marvin rock a single digit. None are left. It's 12. Somebody's taking 12. If, if you're doing 12, that. you might as well just do 18. You might as well just rock your college number. If you're that far into the teens. It's not good podcasting breaking down numbers, no, but I, I thought Blake we Gilligan. Oh, the punter! I he can't hold on. That. He can he can try. He's holding on for dear life. No, it, it's it's down to BJ Ujolari or or eighty eight. I agree, or eleven. Stop. We stop disrespecting Fitz. I'm not. That's the ultimate. You want to give a guy who's never played it down in the NFL? The Cowboys do it. The Cowboys who have five championships and five Lombardis. Like they do it. They say, "Hey, every time we dra- we get a guy who's on route to yeah. like Hall of Fame potential, we're going to give him 88." Fitz played 17 seasons. And they got like and Michael Irvin and I mean, look, it's that's fine. Like you can have like a tradition of of guy, guys who have played at a high level wearing 88, but there's one 11. Nathan there's, is saying 88's retired by the Cardinals. Is that was that uh Night Train Lane? Was Night Train Lane 88, uh, I think he might have been. So give it to him. I'm retired. O- Ojulari, like Ojulari. B- <laughs> hey BJ, let's BJ's rookie BJ season. Ojulari should already be looking for a number, a digit change. Yeah, let's get him. Let's give him like 50 or something. A nice, <laughs> solid outside linebacker <laughs> number. He'd hate that. Hey man, <laughs> let's just see what's available. JV Kane, JV Kane, tight end. 
I thought it was Night Train late. They Come on, JV JJ Kane. Watt got 99 on retired. Let's get JV Kane's number. No disrespect. Sorry to the, to the Kane. Kane that's, why yeah. retire, that's why in the NFL you shouldn't retire numbers. You can put players up in the rafters. Don't retire. Like you them. can't. You can't have Fitz walk away in after 2020 and then give his jersey away in 2024. Sure you can. Sure you no. Can. No. 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 I, I know. I'm in the. I'm in the minority. Nobody agrees with me. That's fine. Saul, Saul agrees with you. Whatever it takes to get Marvin. If that's what if it takes. Marvin, if Marvin thing. demands 11. Johnny sorry. just wants to be able to put, he, he wants to repurpose his old Fitz jersey. That's no, been I don't want, enough. I will never rock my old Cardinal jerseys again because of how hideous they are. Now that I, we've got the new jerseys uh, at the team store. But so Greg Dorch, breaking news, steals Rondell Moore's job and his number from him. Rondell Moore, part of the Atlanta Falcons. You're wrong for this. Unit. You're wrong for that. You're wrong for. Uh, putting Greg Dorch in this crime in his haircut and his car. Yeah, and let's just keep put, <laughs> look out, on it, Rondell. Keep tabs on yeah, your girl. He or where, Rondell. Yeah. Hey, Rondell, I heard your house is on the market. You mind if I take a look? Can we do a quick open house, Rondell? <laughs> Rondell Moore literally is going to be the return man for the Falcons. He's going to turn on, you know, during his bye week, he's going to turn on Sunday ticket, and there's going to be Greg Dorch repping number four, making plays eight. actually, not out there running right. cardio. Yeah, can be. It's going to be him eating because you got two massive mm -hmm. men and Marvin and Michael Wilson on the outside. Good. You get number four. You're, you're a big time player. Like they think a lot of you to give you. Well, number four, man. I posted up what, what uh, Gannon said about Dorch last week. Like, Hey, he, he's going to have an expanded role. He earned it. Like not only did he earn it, like he came to me and he, he, he this is Gannon talking and said, what do I need to do? And he did every single thing that was asked of him and more. If and he, you and he, watch, go ahead. Oh, I mean, in, in the versatility, the adaptability, like what they look for for guys that can not only, uh, you know, make uh, produce on the offensive side of the football or defensive side of the football, and then on teams on fourth down, as Gannon called it. I mean, that's what Greg Dorch does. I Go mean, put on the Pittsburgh game and the Eagle game and watch the plays he makes, like, like laying out catches, like catches that like he should back shoulder. He made a back yeah. shoulder catch against Joey Porter Jr. in the Pittsburgh game for a huge first down like i not to, i don't want to make this like we're bashing rondell more but it's just right now it's just happening organically like you had to deliver the ball it just had everything had to be perfect for rondell more to make a play it felt like and Every same receiver. thing with like the andy isabella yeah. of the world well Whereas, look it, it was there's like some those who can and those who can't and that's that's what it's who, about who shows up right when your team needs it, you. It felt like every receiver other than maybe Michael Wilson from time to time outside of Greg Dorch needed a perfect situation on every pass for them to make a play. Mm -hmm. That's, That's how it felt. Greg That's Dorch was, I mean, no <laughs> ideal situations. He's breaking a tackle. He's never going down at first contact. Like yeah. that's just, that's just a playmaker. Look, Greg Dorch is firmly an Arizona Cardinal this season. And I'm sure they, they want to work out something for beyond it. Get the Greg Dorch <laughs> officially licensed t-shirt in the phnxlocker.com right now. What are you giggling at? Is it more Rondell Moore? Is he taking more ricochet shots? How about this comment right here? Rondell less. <laughs> <laughs> Rondell Moore is going to be rocking like Rondell got fired 80, out of the day 86 off. in Atlanta. Hey, Rondell, let's see what's available. <laughs> You guys think I can have my number? You got four? 86 out of, out of Arizona already. <laughs> you guys think I can have my number four? I wore it in Arizona. <laughs> no, go take it, whatever's left over. Is that who are you? <laughs> I'm sorry. He was on our show. He's a great guy, but he just. You can't Greg say Dorch that after what you just put, just said about him. He's a nice guy. Greg Dorch stealing, yeah. his, stealing his job, stealing his number. Uh, yeah, and as Bo mentioned, pick up. What? I, Pick up the Greg Dorch T-shirt right now at the PHNX Merchandise Locker. How about this right here? It's uh, it's not a new release anymore, but it is. Yeah, it's got the old eighty-three on it. Flipping tastic! This is a collector's item now. It is vintage. His his breakout season, as you've got eighty-three. Uh, it's still uh, it's still even though he's got the wrong number on there, it's still more valuable than your son's Hollywood jersey. <laughs> wow, taking you're taking shots at my <laughs> nine-year-old son. I'm trying to do a, a, a PHNX merchandise locker. How about my Hollywood Hills t-shirt right here? 
I love this one too. <laughs> we desperately need Marvin Harrison Jr. for for more for more than just on the field. We need we need some people to stick around with their numbers and their merch. And, but yeah, I told Jan my son, that, hey, Gondale Miller. That's good. That's good. I told my son, I was like, he was going to a game with my parents, and he's like, I'm gonna get a Hollywood jersey. I'm like, that's a mistake. You should get a Train with Bride jersey. And he's like, No, it's gonna work out. And I'm like, I I don't cover this team for a living, son. I guess you just you just do what you want to do. You be you. And you know what? He nine-year-olds are great. Uh yeah, yeah become a diehard. Go phnx.com. The Bird Gang tee that Bo's repping. It's a classic. This hat's a classic. Become a diehard. There's so many flipping benefits to it. You get 20% off merch. You get a free hat or shirt every single year. Our guy Joel just signed up for his second year. He's gonna get a free piece of merch. So build out your closet, build out your gear ahead of the 2024 season. Little Birdie told me we're going to be unveiling a new shirt sooner rather than later. So get your get your old gear and then get the new gear. And as you can see here, Die Hard Access, you get the membership card, which is elite, a free shirt of your choice. And I think that applies to the hats. Access to all the premium written content from our guys like Gerald Borgay and Craig Morgan. Ever heard of them? Entrance to the Discord. And then, of course, discounts on all events. Um, it's, it's so great to become a Die Hard right now. Our Discord is popping off with so many new people, so many Cardinal fans, and uh, it's just a, a really special place to be right now here in the offseason. Yeah, I might be talking out of class here, but it's not going to be exclusive, the six tickets that we have available for diehards, but it's not going to hurt to be a diehard to get access to the few remaining tickets we have for should the draft. We give out tickets this, so should we do two tickets this week, two tickets the next week, and two the following week? You want to give out some tickets this I don't week? Think, I don't think you and I make those decisions, but... okay, so that's fine. I won't but, bring it back in. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it it won't hurt. I think spreading it out would be good. Yeah, for sure. This is just my marketing brain working. Like mm -hmm. maybe maybe a ticket giveaway or two tickets giveaway like tomorrow and then Friday. Are we going to do them in pairs? Does anybody know? Probably do them no in idea. pairs. Illa Dre, 199 Super Chat. <laughs> He's just asking. He's paid a dollar ninety nine for me to apologize to Johnny for the, what you, apologize for what <laughs> for the sh I think the oh, shot that I took at you. Son. Yeah. So you, know you can what? take well, a shot at my kid anytime you want. want. Your son's two years old. I'm not going to do that. To some shady, yes, it is my show, and I should be making these decisions, but we really <laughs> are. Uh, we're expecting hundred plus people at the draft party again. You can't make it. Hopefully, you get a free ticket. If you can't make it, you're out of state. Our YouTube coverage of our draft show is going to be so elite compared to everything else that's available for this team, respectfully, in this market. If you've, I know we got a lot of new people watching the show. We appreciate it. If you haven't experienced PHNX Cardinals draft coverage, I mean, you can go look at what we did last year. It's on a completely different level. You want analysis, recap, entertainment for about 10 hours cardinal centric special guests over the course of a three-day period you know where to go subscribe right. right now on phnx sports and if you want guys taking cheap shots at former players and <laughs> our co-host family members you got that here as well you know phnx we're scum, we're a couple scumbags here <laughs> the bar is real low here on this a show trio. come on that's right i want to be part of the scumbag that's right you are you are absolutely i want to be the king the of the scumbags. scumbags you you might be you might be uh, it's been another banner show, of course, barring any ba breaking news. We're going to be back with you guys tomorrow. Uh, mock draft. We promise it's coming. We've, uh, we've dragged our feet on mock drafts the last two days. We're going to have a mock draft, a fresh one for you tomorrow. That we're going to do with the PFF mock draft simulator. Also, uh, we got the, uh, the, the viewer mock drafts coming up on Friday. So send those in, hit us up on Twitter, hit us up on the member discord. Uh, we'll get those up. And going on Friday. Leave a like on this video. We want to get to 400 likes for this show where we broke down what the Bills trade of Stefan Diggs, how it impacts the Arizona Cardinals as far as how they navigate the draft. It means for Monty and crew. Uh, if you missed that, go back and watch it. Watch all the other content here on PHNX Sports. Subscribe. Of course, wherever you listen to podcasts, leave a review and leave a five-star rating. For Johnny Venerable, Damon Dog, one of the true scumbags of the show, I'm Bo Brock. We'll talk to you guys tomorrow. <laughs> City like the mayor.